In this video, I'm going to give you everything you need to know to diagnose poor water flow on a trained centrifugal chiller in just four steps. At the end of the video, I'm also going to go through how to check the GPM of the machine so you can check your flow switch in case you're having nuisance problems if you got something else going on with the flow switch. Let's get into it. This may sound like a really dumb thing to say, but I have to say it. Make sure your condenser pump is actually running and that it's actually moving water. So go through and check your pump coupling. Go ahead and make sure that it's actually spinning the impeller and that it's not sitting there spinning freewheeling and it's not actually moving any water. Double check the differential on your pump. Just make sure that it's actually moving water. And then go ahead and double check that you have water in the cooling tower, that the sump's not emptying out as soon as you start your pump. After you verified all that stuff, go ahead and shut your pump off because you're gonna need it off for the next step. Your next suspect is gonna be your pump strainers and your cooling tower nozzles. So with your pump shut off, go ahead and go through and check all your strainers and crawl up inside the cooling tower underneath the fill and look at all the nozzles. Just make sure the nozzles aren't plugged up with rust chips or make sure they're not full of debris and things like that. Once you checked all that stuff, go ahead and fire your pump back up and I'll walk you through how to check your flow switch and make sure it's working properly. All right, two more checks to go. If you haven't found the culprit by now, it's possible that you have a bad flow switch or your flow switch is acting up. So at this point, you want to go ahead and dig into diagnosing that. Before you go changing parts and proceed with troubleshooting, you want to verify that your flow switch is actually working. So with the pump running, check the pressure drop across the condenser with a single gauge. So the piping side of the condenser, you're going to check the pressure drop across there. If you're lucky, the startup guide left the pressure drop data inside the panel. A lot of times I'll write it inside there, but if you're not really lucky, you might have to look back at an older log sheet or you might have to reach out to the factory, see if you can get the pressure drop data. So what you're gonna do is compare the two numbers. So you're gonna look at the pressure drop data that the startup tech left, and you're gonna look at your data, what you have. You're gonna be looking for a dramatic difference. So if it's, you know, a few GPM off, it's not gonna really cause any problems. But if it's way off, then you know that you still have a flow problem, you need to proceed with troubleshooting. Wanna run through some design conditions with you guys really quick, just so you're on the same page with how this machine is supposed to operate, why it has the pressure drop it does, and where that number comes from. So these machines are designed for three GPM per ton on the condenser, so if you got a 500 ton machine, you should be pushing 1500 GPM through the condenser. And when you're pushing that GPM through the condenser, it's gonna produce a 10 degree temperature rise on the condenser at 100% load. Now this is linear, so if you can run the machine at all without it tripping out on you, if you can get the machine to say 50%, you should have a five degree temperature rise across the condenser. And Likewise, if you can get it to 33%, you should have a three degree rise across the condenser and vice versa. So That'll tell you if you're in the ballpark for your flow. And if you're way off, say, say you're moving 25 degree temperature rise across your condenser at 50% load, then you know, holy shit, I have a, a big restriction somewhere and I have no flow going through this condenser. So then you can proceed with troubleshooting. But if you're at design or pretty close to design and you're still tripping your flow switch, then you're going to need to either calibrate your flow switch or you're going to need to replace it. All right, on to the final check. Sometimes rust chips break off the piping and they'll get lodged inside the tubes in the chiller or you'll have fill media from the tower that gets lodged inside the tubes in the chiller. So if all else fails and you're still having flow problems, you know you have flow problems, then you're going to need to dig into the inlet piping side of the condenser. So you're going to need to take out a section of piping, shine a light in there, get an inspection camera, whatever you got to do. And you're going to have to see if you have a physical restriction in the inlet side of the condenser. And that's it. Four steps to diagnosing poor water flow on a train centrifugal. If you guys have any more questions for me, go ahead and leave a comment for me in the comment section. I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Please like and subscribe on the channel so we can continue to grow. Good luck, guys. Stay safe.